Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the first episode of our new video series, Stacked Up. Uh, in this series, we're going to be exploring a bunch of different technology stacks, ranging from different types of databases, server-side stuff, programming languages, UI frameworks, mobile, you name it pretty much. Uh, each episode, we're going to be picking a few of these components and presenting them stacked up together, whether that be you know industry standards um, or just things that we use in our projects. So we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff, uh, cost, performance metrics, security. Should be a good time, should be really educational for you guys. I uh, hope you enjoy. Uh, one other thing, we do want your input on this series. So if you have an interest in a technology we haven't gone over, post a comment and we might be able to uh, make a new video about that. So with that out of the way, let's get onto our first stack and get our feet wet with some of AWS's services. So if you'd like to follow along, uh, you can sign up for a free AWS account at aws.amazon.com. If you're unfamiliar with AWS, it's Amazon's cloud offering. Um, they're pretty much the number one competitor in the space right now. They are used by everyone from like hobbyists to startups to big enterprise companies. Um, you can see a list of people that they work with over here. Uh, and they offer hundreds of different services for computing in the cloud. Awesome stuff, pretty affordable as well if you wanna get your feet wet. They even offer um, Free, a free tier to people who just want to get their feet wet and try different services out, which is pretty cool. So in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at EC2 and RDS, two services offered by Amazon with AWS. And we're going to boot up two instances here and then get them talking to each other and run through a sample use case of when you might do something like that. So let's get started first with EC2. So EC2 stands for Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud. And basically it's their web service that allows you to boot up virtual servers, also known as instances. Um, and so they offer these in different tiers of like memory, CPU, uh, other statistics. So like you can see these pricing tiers here. Uh, you can pick your operating system, Linux or Windows, Red Hat, whatever. Uh, and you've got these different tiers. So like I mentioned, they have that free tier, uh, which falls, the T2 micro falls into that. Um, and you can see how much it costs per hour. You can get it cheaper if you do it like contractually, pretty cool stuff. Um, so yeah, looking at the free tier, you won't have to pay if you wanna follow along with this video because they offer 750 hours a month uh, of that T2 micro instance, which is really, really cool. Um, so within EC2, your machines boot up from what's called an AMI or Amazon machine image. And basically this tells EC2 how to provision your server. Um, it contains like the OS info, uh, how it should set up storage volumes, what packages it needs, um, everything like that. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can obtain these from the presets that Amazon offers you. Just get like a basic Ubuntu instance um, or configure your own with your own packages um, or get them from the AMI AWS marketplace. Um, so the second component we're going to be using today is Amazon RDS, which is Amazon Relational Database Service. Basically, this provides you a way to start up a database um, really, really easily. They offer these database engines listed here, uh, and it can take care of a lot of different database admin tasks for you. So it can take care of uh, just provisioning the hardware and software, patching your database, um, setting it up initially, doing backups, maintenance all that stuff. So you can save a lot of time doing that. Um, I'll show you the pricing scheme for those as well. You'll notice that the same types of instances as EC2, they, these are more expensive because this is more uh, abstracted away from you. This is more of a managed service. So if you're building an application and you want a database, you, know, you could make it yourself on EC2, um, save some money there, but you'd have to invest some time initially to get it set up and then maybe hire like a database admin who can do all those types of tasks, someone who has expertise in that area. So that's something you might want to think about uh, when looking into RDS. So uh, now that we know what we're going to be using today, let's go over what we're going to be actually doing. Um, so what we want to accomplish with RDS and EC2 is pretty simple. Uh, I'll give a use case here. So let's say you're, you're designing this application. You know that you need a database. You know that you need uh, some sort of backend. Um, so that's good. You could throw your server stuff onto EC2 uh, and your database on RDS. Um, so Amazon with AWS offers these really neat things called security groups. And basically these help with security, of course. So this 
lets you um, set up virtual firewalls that can direct traffic in and out of all your instances on AWS. And so basically, let's say in that scenario, you had this RDS instance, you don't want anyone just out on the internet talking to it. You only want your backend server to be able to talk to it. And that's something you can configure with security groups. So just a brief overview um, of what we're gonna be setting up. We're gonna set up an RDS instance running Postgres. We're gonna set up a EC2 instance running Ubuntu. Then we're gonna allow the EC2 instance, but nobody else to talk to RDS. And then we're gonna allow ourselves to SSH into um, EC2 and then prove that we can connect to RDS from there. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, remember you can create an account at aws.amazon.com. Once you do that, you can go into the console here. So first let's start off with RDS. Uh, so here is the RDS console uh, and we're just gonna go ahead and launch an instance. So you can see here the different engine options. Like I said, we're gonna do Postgres. You could filter it to ones that are fall into the RDS free usage tier, just if you wanna make sure you don't have to pay any money for this. Uh, so we can do Postgres there. Um, then we can say, we're just gonna do dev slash test. So here's where you configure specific stuff about your database instance. So we can pick the Postgres version. We'll just leave it at the selected one. Um, you can select that to make sure you're only on the free tier stuff. But if we uncheck that, you can see all the different instances and the number of CPUs and RAM. Let's just stick to T2 micro for now though. Uh, you can give it a certain amount of storage, which you do have to pay for. Um, and then we can make an identifier for this. So let's just call it Postgres QL test. Uh, we're gonna need to configure a username and password. So let's make it like DB admin and then I'll make a password and hit next. So then we get to these security settings. Um, so Amazon automatically creates this VPC for us that basically allows us to configure how we want our different servers to talk to each other. Um, so we're going to just leave this default VPC. You could create a new one if you're making a new application. This is fine for us for now. So we want to make sure that this instance is not public, uh, publicly accessible. Uh, and we're going to configure the security settings in a second here. So make sure that is set to no availability zone. You can put to whatever you want. I'll just put no preference. And then for VPC security groups, we're going to create a new security group. Uh, database name, you can make it whatever you want. I'll make it Postgres. Database port, whatever you want. I'll just make it the default for Postgres. Um, and then, like I said, these other options here, so we can configure how often we want to do backups, when we want to do backups, and how long we want to keep them for. Um, enable enhanced monitoring statistics, which you'll see in a little bit. Uh, you can see like how much CPU and RAM is being used by your instance. Uh, and then you can have it like automatically patch your database by upgrading minor versions automatically, pretty cool. You can specify a maintenance window for that. So let's say you have this use case where you're streaming a bunch of data into your database at this certain time of the day. Well, you definitely wouldn't wanna do backups during that time as well. So you could schedule the backup window to be somewhere else, which is pretty cool. So that's all said and done. Let's launch the DB instance. And then that'll take a few minutes to boot up. So let's head on over to the EC2 console. So we're gonna to need to create a new EC2 instance as well. I just hit launch instance. This is what I was talking about with the AMIs. So we can pick just a pre-configured one from Amazon. Uh, specifically, I wanna use Ubuntu server 1604. We just select that. Uh, then you've got the tiers of the instance types here. Goes all the way down to this crazy 64 CPU server. Let's just do T2 micro um, for that free tier eligible. So then we can go through the whole configuration pro process. I won't go too complex into it. Um, so you can configure scaling options and things. We're just gonna continue on. Add additional storage volumes, tags if you need key value pairs throughout your instance. Um, then here we go with the security group. So we can name it whatever we want. I'll just leave it as a default. We need to make sure that we can SSH into our box. Um, you could make this source my IP so that only you could. Uh, we'll just make it anywhere. That's fine for us. Uh, so as long as we can SSH into this box, that's great. Then you'll see if we review and launch. Okay, we can make sure everything's good. You'll see that it automatically, um, yeah, creates this in from anywhere for 
uh, two two, and then it automatically allows us to go anywhere from the in, from this instance. So from our instance, we can go anywhere out to the internet, which is great. So here it's asking us to configure a key pair. So this is how we're going to get access to our instance through SSH. Uh, I'm going to use an existing one. You could create one, uh, a name it, and download it. I'm just going to use one I already have. You want to make sure that you store these in a safe location because if you lose it, you won't be able to get back into your instance and you'd have to terminate it. So with that said, we're going to launch instances. Okay, so now we can view our instances. Uh, and while that's booting up, it's marked as pending in this console here. Let's check on our RDS instance. Um, so I think we can see in instances that it is still creating. Um, so I don't know if it'll give us the host name. So our endpoint is not yet available. I think the the EC2 should boot up a bit faster. Yeah, so that's up and we've got this IP for it. Um, so that's good. So let's try and SSH into this. So pull up a terminal and we're going to SSH. So that's just going to be SSH I. I'm going to drag in my key here. Okay. And then since we're on just a Ubuntu image, we're going to do Ubuntu at, and then we're going to need our IP. Yes, accept the fingerprint and we are in. Great, so let's make sure we're on the right version of Ubuntu. Uh, let's do LSB release A. All right, we're on 16.04. So let's do a sudo apt git update. And then let's install a package that's going to let us uh, talk to our Postgres. So we're going to do sudo apt git install postgresql and postgresql contrib. And while that's installing, let's check if our RDS instance is up. All right, it's backing up for some reason, even though we just created it. So I think we should be able to see this host. Okay, so there's our endpoint, and we're on 5432. Four, four, um, we are going to need to configure that security group, though, so we can access it from our EC2 instance. So if you scroll down, we can see our security groups. Just click on that. So this is what it automatically created for us. Let's check the inbound and outbound rules. Again, outbound, you can go anywhere. Inbound, we are allowing it from my IP to uh, 5432. So let's go ahead and edit that. Um, we're actually going to want to allow this from our other security group. So let's check, let's remove this filter. These are all my security groups. You can see the one that we just created for the EC2 back here. Um, it is launch wizard two. Okay, so we need make sure that that is the one that we associate with that inbound rule. So launch wizard, wizard 2, that's the group ID we need. Um, so for RDS launch wizard 1, which is the one that just created, I believe. Yeah, uh, inbound, we're going to edit this and make it from a custom TCP rule from launch wizard 2 for 5432. Okay, so now we're going to be able to only access this RDS instance through port 5432 from that security group, which our EC2 instance is on. So we can go, we can go grab the host the endpoint, and then let's try and connect to it. So we should have psql now, so we can do psql h for host u for our db admin uh, and then d for our database which i named postgres and then i'll enter my password and we are in so we're not going to be able to do this from anywhere else except from that ec2 instance or anything that's on that security group i should say um, so now we're in the postgres console so you can do whatever you want type help or just quit out hopefully this has been a good example of a sample use case for maybe starting to arch architect an application on uh, AWS services. Um, so let's just quickly review what we did. So we set up an RDS instance, set up an EC2 instance, 
and we allowed our computer at home to SSH into our EC2, and then our EC2 to access uh, the RDS with Postgres through that port with those security groups. Uh, that's pretty much it for this first episode of Stacked Up. Again, post a comment if you have any suggestions of future technologies you'd like to see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.